Alright guys, the moment we've all been waiting for. We got the Rolex X25 and my Toros Greens Master 1600. Today we're going to battle it out between two machines and see which one comes out on top. Will it be the new kid on the block from South Africa? Or will it be the trustworthy machine that makes PGA Tour pros cry when they don't sink that putt? Stick around to see the results. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a bit more special than usual because I've got Rolex here with me today. And if you haven't heard of them, they're a real mower manufacturer straight out of South Africa and have been in the real mowing game internationally for quite some time. They're the new kid on the block in the US market and there's been a lot of buzz about them in regards to the residential real mower business. So Sunday proved to be quite eventful as we welcomed a group of enthusiastic gentlemen to test out these mowers. It was truly inspiring to connect with like-minded individuals who share our passion for lawn care, particularly real mowing. Surprisingly, I hadn't anticipated such a vibrant community of fellow enthusiasts in our vicinity. Conversations flowed effortlessly as we dived into topics ranging from lawn care techniques to automotive interests, typical of middle-aged men. Some among us were seasoned users of the Cali trimmer, while others were new to the world of real mowing. Nevertheless, the experience firsthand testing and demonstrating the machine was universally rewarding. Later on, I'll give my thoughts on the design, the ease of use, and the cut quality. But let's get on to the walkthrough. And I apologize in advance, the mic cut out during the time I was talking to Josh Ivey, so I put captions in there to hopefully make it more clear. Alright, so we'll start out up here. Um, this is your real speed, and it usually doesn't kick in until about three. Some of them four, three, it just depends. And then this is your ground speed. The harder you squeeze it, the faster you go. This is a nine blade on the 25 with the Honda engine rib roller. This is the old style rib roller. They've got a new version out that's gonna be coming with all the mowers. The reel doesn't kick on until about 1800 RPMs. The drive does not work until the reel is spinning. But you can use the mower without the drive. You can push it if you needed to, like if you got in a spot that, say, was kind of tight and you didn't want to use the drive, you could just push it in there, turn it around, you know, not use the drive on it. All of your gearing, chains, everything's behind this cover right here. It has 10, three 10 millimeter bolts to take it off. All your bearings are greasable. It has a centrifugal clutch. That's how it operates. Um, I really wish I would have brought one that didn't have a cover on it. Everything's uh, chain driven, right? Yes. There's one pla piece of plastic. It's the tensioner, but it's designed to take the brake versus your chain. If something was to happen, it breaks first, and it's only it's a cheap replacement. That's why the plastic tensioner is there. Um, your height adjuster, super simple to work, clockwise, raises your height of cut, counterclockwise, lowers it, yep, millimeters, 25.4, you divide that by 25.4 and that gives you your actual standard number, so if you take 13 and divide it by 25.4, it would give you 0.5, whatever, because 13 is half inch. Yeah, this mower comes in with the rib roller. I think it's around 185, 185 pounds. The 20 is, I think it's around 150, 160 with the rib roller. Um, I'm not quite sure on that uh, exact weight, but it's right around in that. It's options. So it's 330 more for the Honda. Um, the XR 950 you can get on the 20 and the 25 and it's in between the cost of the 550 and the Honda but the 950 has 10% more power than the GX 160 
if you were to want the Briggs motor. The, oh, the vulcanized rubber? Yeah, it's it grips super well, and it's, I mean, it lasts for ever. Um, yeah, I don't, I really don't know that for sure. Um, that's something that I need to find out because I've never really even thought about finding out how thick that was. But um, I know they've got mowers from the 60s that still have their original. Yeah, so it's it's a something that you would never have to replace, really, unless you ran it through a cheese grater or something. You know? It's gonna be like these are the. This is like the, uh, the way that it's just kind of going right now. Yeah, and and to be a drum, it makes the stripes a lot better. Um, you know, it's kind of more towards the greens mower, having the drum on the back but it's definitely not a greens mower and we don't want to compare it to a greens mower it's it's two different machines this is really based towards more of the homeowner you know and it also like has a slope lawn or whatever he he can this vulcanized rubber definitely yes then yes that's one reason why i'll never have one in my yard is because it's so it's got so much slope to it Yeah, I mean it's it's very comfortable, and the guys can even attest for it that it's just almost natural whenever you're mowing with it. I like to kind of keep my body in the center, kind of almost even with the back of the handlebars, and it's just when I make a turn, it's just so so natural, you know. So. Yeah, you have to have the real spinning before the drive will work. Yeah. Wide open, and it does not change your ground speed. Okay. This only changes your RPM of your reel. Your ground speed is controlled all by your clutch, okay, your clutch handle. Correct. And I think they did a test the other day and it'll go up to four miles an hour. Yeah. I'm, yeah, so I had actually took and put one of these on the throttle side because I've got such a long stretch of, of yard and it worked okay, but um, I found myself having to try to work it to keep it going fast enough because it wouldn't hold the, the speed. So I ended up going back to the clutch, but when I moved it to the right side, since I'm right-handed, it made it a lot more natural and easier for me, so. I guess there's a little debate in the internet talking about release grind versus non-release grind. Can yep. you talk a little bit about that? What are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts on that are, um, if you want to have a relief grind so bad, then your first off season, take it and have a relief grind done on it. But I've had zero issues with it. I've probably got hours on this machine already and um, I've only had to back lap it a few times. And one of them was because I basically destroyed the bed knife because I was cutting sand with it. After I did an aerate, I cleaned all my plugs up, but I still had a little sand left over and um, I should have put my smooth roller on, but I was being a little lazy. And, use my groove and and some of the I, I ended up getting my bed knife with it and I, I back lapped it then and, and it, it come back out so yeah there's no difference in the cut quality to me I mean I, I mow my yard at 3 8 and it's it cuts great and yes it does I mean I really love the stripes that it puts down it's, So you take this 10, these three 10 millimeters off and then um, you pop the side cover off. There's a 19 millimeter nut right here. Put a drill on it and you put the drill in forward, which turns the reel backwards. And I always put my drill on one wide open. You can put a zip tie on it, whatever. 
but I, I always just hold it and I just it's it literally takes two minutes to start back lapping versus having to take the cover off have a special tool I mean you still got to take the cover off but you don't have to have a special tool for it it's super simple to do you, yeah so you loosen these bolts these nuts on these bearings you loosen the nuts on the on these right here and then you just tighten the bolts the bolt heads and it's very minimal that you have to turn it to start moving it down i always do like eighth in, eighth turns and check with paper i try to stay even because if you get it off it'll really start cutting hard on one side and then you're like oh well i need to get it to cut paper well you got it cutting really hard on one side and it's going to be really loud i had a guy actually have that happen on his mower that he had just got and I had him back the bed knife, the reel all the way off the bed knife and bring it back down even and it quieted it down a lot. Cause you know, reel mowers are gonna be loud anyway cause it's metal to metal contact. So he knew that it was gonna be loud but he just didn't think that it should be that loud and, and it, he was right. It, But it was because I guess during transport, something happened to it, something moved and he backed it off and put it back and it, it worked good after that. So. So what, would, what would be your best way to make sure it's balanced? Did you, like, did you start it off where you would maybe uh, put like, a filler gauge on both sides to see if it was even and then go from there? And... Yeah, I guess you could, but um, I just, I usually just use paper and yeah, and I just hit it with the paper and if it cuts, you know, if it cuts the paper here and it doesn't here, I'll try to back this one off a little bit and move this one down because Sometimes when you move them down, it'll push this down even more. So you kind of got to be careful, you know. So uh, that's. So one side kind of affects the other. Yeah, and and sometimes tightening this one down can even maybe bring this one up too. It just it just depends. So I always try to make sure that it's just cutting paper all the way across, and I always go back and forth a lot when I'm doing it to make sure that it's it's even. So. Right now. Yes, I actually have um, real pros in um, Salado, Texas. They actually have one of my mowers that I picked up that was damaged that they're grinding for me right now. Real pros in Salado. Yep. And they had no problems grinding it. You know, there's been hearsay that the Rolex mower can't be ground because the side plates are too low. Well, that's not true. They ground, they're grinding the mower for me and they actually ground that mower also. So uh, they are getting a new uh, machine now and they can do relief cuts also. So they'll be, they'll be able to do relief grinds, but I'll be offering grind service by fall. All right, uh, this, this bed knife is, it's pretty much gone though. Cause like I said, I've, I've got a, uh, I, I mowed too much, I mowed too much sand with it, but it's, it's a low cut bed knife. It'll cut down to uh, 0 0.07 inches. And uh, they're $84. Yep. No, oh, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts holding it on. But I would take the side plate off. There's two bolts on each side. You can drop the sole plate, bed knife and all out. And then you can take it all apart right there, put your new bed knife on, bolt it back up. It probably take you an hour to do it. Yeah. And this is the old style rib roller. I think I've already went over that. The new one's all one piece aluminum. Um, it's CNC machined. It has bearings on the side, so it's a super smooth roll. The new smooth roller is the same way. It's got bearings on the side. It's a twice as heavy as the old smooth roller. Uh, super smooth roll with the bearings in it. It's... Josh has showed me a picture of it. I don't know if we're allowed to show it right now, but it's, it's a really nice looking roll. Yeah, they'll be they'll be hitting the, with the 25s. Um, 
that I have coming, they'll be on them next week. So uh, I'll definitely show them then. I, I haven't confirmed with John if it was okay or not to show them yet, so. It looks like everything's made. So like manufacturing wise, like uh, materials and all that, is it straight out of South Africa shipping into the US or some of these are US parts? Or yeah, everything's made in South Africa and it's all, it's all shipped over here on container. And this is the 25 inch grass catcher so you can kind of see the size of it. It holds a lot of grass. We did a demo yesterday on it and the guy's grass was so thick. It literally filled it up in one pass and it almost filled a 30 gallon bag, trash bag up. So it's, it's, it holds a lot of grass. Yeah, they, they're proud to say that their machine is all metal. Um, there's a lot of people that want the plastic because it's lighter, but they're proud to say their machines are made with metal and they're built to last. I mean, um, they've got them running back from the 60s, so it says something for them. Uh, the 25s come with the handle, the 20s do not. No, I mean, I don't know if maybe if they get enough demand for it, they might they might put it, but um, as of now, it only comes on the 25. Okay, now that I got a chance to use the machine, let me go ahead and give my thoughts on it. Initially, when I first saw the mower, it was definitely an extended pleasing machine. The X25 especially looked beefy and very solid. There is no doubt that these machines are well built with quality hardened steel. I do not know whether the steel is forged or cast, but it is something that can be further clarified in the next meetup. I've looked at the blades of this thing and the steel is very thick, which brings me to my thoughts on the relief grind versus non-relief grind. From what I could tell, the cut quality does not differ from each other. Now the question is, will there be many services out there that will take a non-relief grind mower? That answer is yet to be determined, but you've heard it from Josh Ivey himself. There are places that do. I did hear that Rolex plans to introduce grinding machines and service centers in the US, which instills confidence in the future support of these mowers. Okay, so let me talk about a few things that I thought was weird with this mower. The first thing is the real speed handle on the left control. Basically, you have a dial that goes from 7 to 1 with only 3 to 1 that allows the reel to spin. I didn't quite understand why you have 7 to 4 when they don't really do anything besides idle the machine. I felt like there was no use to have that many speeds let alone have only the top 3 speeds engaged real. As my brain understood it, the number 1 dial will most likely give you the best cut since it's the highest speed for the blades, therefore giving you a higher clip rate. Now I do know the Toro GM, the real speed varies based on the drum speed, meaning regardless of how fast or slow you walk, the real speed and clip rate will be consistent as you're passing over your grass. For most residential reel mowers, you'll never have this type of feature. Most of the time, you'll have a reel speed that just stays the same, and regardless of how fast or slow you are walking, the clip rate will be inconsistent. It's something that many homeowners will probably never notice, but it does explain why we do get some of the best cuts with a greens mower versus the common residential mower. Another aspect is that the mower actually doesn't move forward until you get up to the speeds within 3 to 1 range. So both the rear drum and the reel are not independent of each other. If you wanted to take the mower to a different spot of the yard but didn't feel like pushing it, you would utilize the rear drum to move you there. But that also entails the reel spinning while you do so. Again, you would take the speed down to 4 to 7 to stop the reel and then push the mower freely. If I were to compare that feature to the McLean, there was an option to independently use the reel without the rear drive. However, you could not use the rear drive without the reel spinning. For the Toro GM, you do get to use the rear drum without spinning the reel by pulling on the lever that's by the rear assembly. But one of the drawbacks is that the Toro GM is so heavy that it's almost impossible to pull it backwards if you're needing to line up something given its weight. 
Disengaging the rear from the drum does help a little bit, but you do need some strength to pull back the mower if you desire. As with Rolex, the machine weight is 185 pounds with a groove roller, according to Josh Ivey, which makes it much more favorable to maneuver if you need to pull the mower backwards to readjust your stripe line. Now the weight of the GM1600 just feels more planted into the ground, therefore making the mower feel a lot smoother. You don't feel as many bumps or ruts that you would feel with the X25. If I were to put it in automotive analogy, the X25 feels like a muscle car or a Harley Davidson with its loud sound, unique handlebars, and rough ride. It also feels very strong and solid as if nothing can break it. I did forget to mention that once the reel spins it does get very loud, probably one of the loudest mowers I've ever used. Some have said that the loudness is attributed to the non-relief grind, or both the bed knife and the reel not matching up. On the contrary, the Toro GM, while the mower itself is heavy, feels very smooth, as if you're driving an electric car on the highway per se, and also being one of the quietest gas power mowers I've ever used. Okay, so now on to ease of use. There are a few members in the Facebook group that mentioned that Rolex needs to take a three-point turn in order to come back the other way. When I tested that out, I felt like it was not necessary as you can tilt the mower back by lifting the front up and slightly squeeze the throttle to move the drums forward as you are making the U-turn. Something that I'm used to doing already with the GM1600. Now I would be biased if I told you that the GM1600 is easy to use. The truth is, it wasn't when I first had it, and there was a learning curve as well as required techniques to make it work specifically for my lawn shape. For someone with a slope lawn, I would steer you away from using a greens mower totally because these machines are meant for putting greens where the surfaces are generally flat. In my honest opinion, I believe all real mowers should have a rear drum, and that only existed with greens mowers until now. The Rolex rear vulcanized drum gives you the best of both worlds. You can lay stripes effortlessly and still take on slopes. It explains why so many guys out there are actually selling their Toro or John Deere mowers to get one of these. Another aspect with Rolex is I like the fact that you can cut grass without having to use the drive. Similar to how the McLean was where you could push it while cutting. With the Greensmaster, this is not even possible. Many of those hard to reach areas around the perimeter of my house require I use rotary scissors, therefore costing me additional expense on a tool to accomplish something that a mower should already do. But overall for me, the Toro still wins my heart. It's just a machine that no other residential mower can compare to. It truly gives some of the best cuts I've ever seen. But if I were to compare the cuts side by side, it is barely noticeable. This is the cut with the X25. There's 1600 right there. Also, given I do not have any slopes to deal with, and the majority of my lawn is flat, I'll be sticking to the greens mower. If you're on the fence about getting into real mowing or are searching for a gas-powered one, look no further. Rolex is the answer. I almost guarantee you that if you end up getting a McLean, Cali, or True Cut, you will eventually get rid of it and look into getting something else. At least that was the case for me. I had a specific goal in mind as how I wanted my lawn to look, and I knew the McLean wasn't going to achieve that. Also, the pain of maintenance for that mower is just unbearable. I won't go into the details of that, but many can attest for what I mean. Also hearing from many members in the Rolex Facebook community, customer service has been second to none. If you guys follow that Facebook group, you know that the owners are actively engaged with their members. They take customer feedback seriously, and the great part about them is they are a true manufacturer that produces real mowers machines. Based on customer feedback, they can and improve their machines within a heartbeat. At times, they even went out of their way to accommodate members who have special needs based on their health condition. It's safe to say that Rolex truly cares about their customers. Well, that's a wrap guys. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions about Rolex or are interested in purchasing one, I'll leave details in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed the content, please like and consider subscribing to stay up to date for other videos. I'm certain this won't be the last Rolex video, so stay tuned for more to come.
Take it easy, guys, and happy mowing.